All right, here we are over a beer, episode five. Uh, it's gonna be a good one today. We're back to our roots. I got Teddy alongside with me. Um, coming off, we got a little MLB playoff talk. We got the playoff starting next week. Um, we're gonna chat a little NFL. We're gonna do our lock parlay. So we're gonna pick five teams this week for you. So we're gonna help out a little bit there. Uh, Teddy's got a business endeavor going on. Break Room Daily, shout out for the merch. So check them out if you haven't already. Link in the description. And last but not least, it's going to be a fun ending to this episode. We're actually going to have a speed changing contest of our baby's diapers. So it's going to be hilarious. Uh, there's some chugging elements to it too. So just stick around and check that out. It'll be fun. Um, but without further ado, I mean, we got Teddy here, obviously. How's it going? It's going great, man. How's it going with you? I'm doing pretty good, dude. Thanks for asking. Um, so I actually got a request this week, one yeah. of the girls at work, she says, why don't you bring on that hot guy from episode one? And that was me? So you ask, and I, I did it. Deliver. I delivered, yeah. I guess, I guess I'm, I'm the hot guy. I guess so, dude. I was like, are you sure you're thinking episode one? <laughs> you sure you got the right guy? <laughs> you got the right episode, there's only four at that point, so she couldn't have missed by too much. Um, so, I mean, if... Anyone here, if they think Teddy's an attractive guy, he actually has this modeling website. I do. www.breakroomdaily.com. A bunch of shirtless pictures of him. Sure. Why don't you go over and check it out? Um, but in all seriousness, talk to me a little bit about Breakroom Daily. What do you got going on there? Yeah, so Breakroom Daily is a website slash newsletter that I started up mainly because Every day I would go to multiple different websites to try to find the things I liked, which were fantasy football stuff, sports stuff, business topics, business tips, travel tips, and just odd topics, quotes of the day, fun facts of the day. And I was sick of going back and forth looking for stuff, so you know, I thought to myself, why not just create one thing, central website, central newsletter that people can go to, because I guarantee you there's a ton of people out there in the world just like me who want to have this stuff just come right into their inbox. And so that's what I created, and it's going great so far. We've got about 100 subscribers. We just started last week, and uh, we plan to grow. Absolutely. That's cool. And I, I like how you, to start, you have the newsletter, kind of drawing some people in, letting them see you know, what you're about. Um, talk a little bit what you might see in that newsletter. Yeah, so in the newsletter, you'll see anything from beer reviews, uh, music reviews, fantasy football, stardom, sit um, business tips, you know, like five sales techniques to help you close a deal, stuff like that. Just interesting stuff that uh, your typical professional may want to engage in that you may not find on like a bar stool or a uh, ESPN or anything like that. Yeah. Right, exactly. So it's just something that I think a lot of people will um, enjoy and I hope people do and we're starting slow and we haven't launched yet really we're just in the pre-launch stage but we plan on launching soon and potentially having a big party in Boston as we launch cool that's gonna be a good time I can't wait um, you'll probably be able to watch this video there soon if not yeah tomorrow um, so we got a fun beer today we're kind of with the theme of fall we're finally there um, pumpkin season has begun for them basic bitches um, so I've been doing a ton of pumpkin because that's me you one of the pumpkin uh, spice latte guys oh, huge pumpkin spice you, latte. you look like you are yeah I'm, I'm a chick um, so this week we got dogfish head that's the brewer uh, pumpkin ale pretty awesome beer logo pretty awesome beer emblem um it looks sweet if you haven't seen this beer look at just look up the label i think you'll be really intrigued yeah it um, does look cool and you know i obviously know you have the spec so what are we looking at in terms of this beer so we're looking at uh seven percent abv and we're looking at 28 ibu and it's made by I think you said it already, Dogfish Head, which oh. makes a great beer, yeah, oh typically. Yeah, they do a good job. Uh, right out of Delaware. And it's a fall beer that a lot of people can enjoy. That's cool. No, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you'll likely hear some babies on set because we're going to do that contest at the end. So we'll be here <laughs> with that. Um, but we'll start it then. We'll take a sip. Everybody loves babies. Oh, cheers. Yeah, cheers. We'll try this beer. We'll do our initial thoughts first. We at Breakroom love babies. We love babies and beer. 
Babies, beer, and we love dogs too. Yeah, and breast milk supply is always a good thing. Breast milk supply. Um, so actually, that initial sip, that's got a strong pumpkin flavor to it. It does, but it's not too overwhelming. No. It's, it's strong, like, but it's not um, too strong, really. Yeah, so interestingly enough, uh, the beer we did last week by Alternative Dimensions, um, Alt Beer, um, it was really good. It was also 28 IBU, International Bitterness Units, as we were talking about earlier. Yeah. If you don't know what that means, it's just essentially how bitter the beer is. Um, I think this holds true, the 28. They both had a similar flavor, weren't too strong, um, easy on the palate. So I really enjoy this beer. So we'll definitely continue to sip it throughout. We'll give you a formal score at the end. Obviously, a beer changes throughout the drink. So um, I know you're a big baseball guy. So Teddy obviously plays Huge baseball, baseball guy. In college. Yep. Um, pitcher, big lefty on the mound, I'm sure. Well, I wouldn't say big lefty, but definitely a lefty. <laughs> Um, so we're going to preview some of those MLB playoff series. Um, first, we'll just start with the two play-in games. So the wild card slots meet prior to the playoffs. Um, the Rays and the Oakland A's, that's the first play-in game for the wild card. And then we got the Nationals and the Brewers in the NL. Um, I think we should start, obviously, in the AL. We're both AL guys. Um, talk to me a little bit about the Rays and the A's. It's likely going to be Charlie Morton for the Tampa Bay Rays, and then either Mikey Fires or Frankie Montez for the A's. I, I think they should go with the kid, Montez. He's been having a great year. Uh, who do you like in that initial game? I think I like the A's. They've been really good all season. And I think I love Chris Davis, Marcus Simeon have been great. So I do think I do think I like the A's in that. Um, the Rays, though, you can never count them out, man. You know they have the one of the lowest payrolls in baseball and still continue to pump out winning seasons, which is incredible. I agree. I had the A's there, too. Um, they have multiple guys on their team swinging 30 home runs. Olsen, Simeon, Chapman. Yeah, I love that Chapman guy. Chapman's nasty. Oh, that guy can play. The Rays, they don't even have anyone hitting over 280 on their team. So their offense is desolate. I mean, right. Charlie Morton's a veteran, so you never know. Uh, but I do like the A's there. Um, in the second game, the NL game, you have the Nationals and the Brewers. Yep. Um, obviously, you'll probably see Scherzer for the Nats. Who's been incredible this been year. Great. And then the Brewers, um, my pick would be Brandon Wardup. Um, he's a younger guy as well, having a great year. Um, I think for me, that game, it's got to go to the Nationals uh, strictly because they have a lot going on for them. And then Yelich is obviously out for the Brewers. Yeah, Yelich out, I think, is a big killer to the Brewers because they really don't have a great pitching staff. Right. And not having Yelich in their lineup, I think, just gives the Nationals that um, bump up on them. So I, I'd pick the Nats to win that, too. It's hard to beat a guy like Scherzer, too, in a one-game series. Right, and then not only Scherzer, they've got Strasburg mm -hmm. and a couple other guys as well. And then they've got Anthony Rendon in the hitting lineup, who's been really good all year. I'm going to ask you two yes or no questions, and then I'll Hit elaborate. Me. Would you be someone that would be interested in shortening the MLB season? There's been a lot of talks. Are you a traditionalist, or do you think it would work to shorten the season? I'm pretty traditional, but more so than shortening the season, I think they somehow need to make the gameplay faster. Okay. And I because I think that's more what it is. You know, talk, like, but it, it really hasn't worked. No, it hasn't worked, and I think... It, what happens is you lose people because the games take so long. You're talking three and a half hour games, some games running four hours. I mean, that's a lot of time to sit there and watch a game. You know, it's a slow paced game. Yeah, so that's so you're saying no to the yes or no. And the second question is right. yes or no. <laughs> I'm going to um, say no. Ex expanding the playoff roster, so ha adding a few additional teams into the mix for the playoffs. No, nah, no. Nah. I think it's good how it is. So you like it? Yeah, I do like it. I'm not a big one-game guy for baseball. I know it's fun, and like everyone in our society nowadays, they want things like obviously. Yeah, everyone wants it now, now, instant, now. Instant, instant, instant. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It would obviously you'd have to mix it up because you need an odd number of teams in order for the wild card system to work with only three divisions per league. Yeah. Um, I oddly had this idea to go similar to football, so have six teams make it in. Top two seeds overall, regardless, get a first series by, 
listen, it not a full three to three out of five. Yeah. But two quick two out of three series for the lower seeded teams in both leagues. So it'd be three six four five two three game series and then obviously the one two would jump in for the second. Do you not like the system that they have now? I just don't like the one game playoff for the the wild card. So yeah. I was trying to think of a solution to make that more interesting. Or you could just go back to the old rules and only four teams make it. Um, my only thought is there's 30 teams in the MLB. Yeah. There's also 30 teams in the NBA, 31 teams in the NHL, and 32 teams in the NBA. Did I just repeat that? I think you did, Tim. Long story short, this is the only freaking sport that has limited amount of playoff teams. Just a thought. Right. I mean, I, li- I actually like the one game playoff okay because i like that you just go out there and that's it for them they give it their all they put in as you know they put in as many pitchers as they can because they have to win that game right. so you know if Scherzberg's off the first couple innings they say pull him we got to put in strasburg right. who may be pitching next game but they got to win that game because that's yeah. the game that counts you know right. 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 so i do like that and i think it um it's fun too. It's a fun first kind of first start to the playoffs too. You've got that one game playoff, yep. and whoever wins that game goes on, and those teams are anxiously watching those games and stuff. So I think right. it's cool. Yeah, I'm pitching a 150 <clears throat> game season. That, so, that play in series. Yeah. And then um, obviously six teams per league. That's just my. Are problem. you pitching it to the MLB? If the MLB is listening, I know you send to the commissioner. Well, shorten your season. That's a way it might work. So yeah. Just a few thoughts. That way, the season ends in <clears throat> mid September instead of late September. Um, but without further ado, let's go into the actual divisional rounds. Um, so I think we both agree. If it is the A's, it would be the A's versus Astros. Um, I think the Astros they have a better lineup, a better staff, a better yeah. bullpen. I would go Astros in three in that series. Um, I don't know, you know. How much do you like the A's? I know you said you did. I do like the A's, but I mean the Astros are phenomenal. They've what are they have? They have 105 wins this year. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. first 105. Yeah. So I would say 100% the Astros. I think maybe the, I think maybe the A's take one from them. Okay. So maybe four. I actually had written four originally, then I crossed it out. You can see the three on top. Yeah. So I think we're pretty close there. Uh, the series that could be interesting and probably the most intriguing series of the playoffs: the Twins and the Yanks. Um, so, I mean, obviously you have a Oda Rizzi for the Twins and Berrios, their one-two punch. That's tough to beat. Um, the Yankees realistically have three guys that all could be number ones, Tanaka, Paxton, and German. So, I don't know. What do you like there? I actually like the Twins, to be honest with you. I think the Yankees are a little bit hurt right now. Batanza, he's out. You know that? So, he's, yeah. he's, you know, the guy who comes in to hold the games, and he's been... He's hurt, so I think it gives the Twins a little bit of a, you know, a better chance to stay in those games and late in the innings. So I do like the Twins. So fun stat, and you were spot on with the Yankees injuries. They've had 30 players go on the IR this year. The, the closest team in second, I believe, was 28. Like, yeah. So many years ago. So that's yeah. So they're hurt, and I I like the Twins. They're young. They've been really good all season. I honestly thought they'd fade out halfway through the season or so, but I on that one. they kept it up. So yep. I like the Twins. Okay, Twins. That's fine. Um, this series could shift slightly, just depending on that wild card seed. So the Brewers technically could win out. The Cardinals could lose out. And the Brewers are technically beat the division, but yeah. I don't see that happening. So we're going to safely say Braves versus Cardinals. Um, the Braves have one of the best, if not the best, offenses in the league. Yeah, Braves all day, Braves. It's and their staff is nice too. And I like the Cardinals, but the Braves are good and really good. And they added um, what's his name, Donaldson, halfway yeah, through the year. Yeah. So yeah, they've been they've been great all year. I mean, they have obviously Friedman and Soroka. Out of there. Yeah, they built that team pilot. around Freeman. They kept him when they could have traded him when they were terrible. Yep. And he's proven to be just really good year after year. And then Acuna Jr. could be. And Acuna the- Jr. and their pitching staff's really yeah. good. Soroka and a few others. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, Hudson and Wayne Wright for the Cardinals, obviously they're a good one too. So yep. if they go off, that would be their only chance. Um, I like the Braves. I think that will stretch to five, though. I think one of those two could get a win. In- I like the Braves in four. You like Raisins? Yeah, I like the okay. Not too far off, so I think that's a pretty fair series. 
the series that I'm curious about, and I'll see where you're at on this. We got the Nats and the Dodgers. That would be saying that the Nationals beat or win in the play right, game. Right. Um, they're one through four. Strasburg, Corbin, Scherzer, Sanchez. That's one of the best <laughs> stacks in baseball, in my opinion. Um, obviously, the Dodgers probably the best, if not second. You got Bueller, Kershaw, you, and Madej. Um They're nasty. So, and obviously, the Dodgers one through five lineup wise, they might be the best lineup in baseball. Um, I don't know. I like the Nats. That would be my upset. I like the Dodgers. Nationals in five. I'm going strictly based off of what I think is going to happen. Yeah. The Dodgers are the best team in baseball, thus I'm betting against them. Yep. I'll get a nice money line. Um, I'll go Dodgers in four. Um, they've got experience. They've been in the playoffs for multiple years now in a row, so most of those guys have playoff experience. I like them. Like, I, I think I like them going back to the series. This could be like similar with like the NCAA brackets. If the Nationals lose, this pick's going to be a waste of time. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I don't know. I like the Nats in five. I just think that staff is great. If Strasburg and Scherzer start to go off, that's a tough team to beat. Um, so, that would be wrapping it up for baseball. Those are our picks. Um, lock them in. Lock them in. I think we're pretty close there overall. Lock them in because at break room daily, we don't miss. No, we don't. Especially here. We're going to give you a five team parlay. And realistically, if you bet this five team <laughs> parlay, you're going to make some money. Teddy and I do not lose. And that's a complete lie. Um, the first game we're looking at, and this is strictly because it's the Patriots. I always am curious of their money or their um, point spread, whether it's good or not. We got Pats minus seven versus the Bills. Um, what are your thoughts on giving the Bills seven? I actually like the Bills to cover that this week. You do? Yeah. I think the Patriots have been really, really hot over the past couple weeks. And I think the Bills are going to come into that game and, and play great defense. And I honestly think it's going to be somewhere around like 24-21 Pats or something. Okay, I like that. I mean, the Bills, yeah, their defense is tough to deny. But the Patriots, believe it or not, I believe they're top three defense as well. Yeah. We haven't given up a touchdown yet. Right. Which is pretty fascinating. So that's going to be a, a defensive game potentially. Bet the under there. I bet you, I, I'm, I'm sure you like the Pats minus seven, right? I like the Pats minus seven, but I'm going to buy a half point. So I think we win by a touchdown. Yeah. And I don't feel good about seven ever in a line. So right. I'm going to buy either a point or a point and a half, and I'm going to have the Pats in my parlay. So you're going to go, so put, so put the Pats in the parlay for Pats minus seven. Put it. Put the Pats in the parlay for Pats minus seven. Buy yourself a half point. Buy yourself a half point. Or just don't. Or go with the Pats. I think the Pats went by anywhere from 10 to 13. Yeah. I don't think the Bills got an offense, so that's just me. Um, the second game, this one will be interesting. Two undefeated teams, which sounds wrong. The Chiefs and the Lions. The Lions are 2-0-1. Obviously, the Chiefs are 3-0. and um, The Chiefs are given seven to the Lions on the road. Um, I feel like that's way too little for the point spread. Uh, what are your yeah? How do you feel? Yeah, I I mean I love Patrick Mahomes. He's pro he's an incredible athlete, a great quarterback, and he's got Kermit. a bunch of players around him, and he makes the play. So I honestly think yeah, Kansas City covers that minus seven. But I do think it's a high-scoring game, and if we're talking fantasy, yeah. I think I like a lot of the um, Detroit players to have good games because they're going to have to keep passing the ball. So I like Galladay. I like um, Matt Stafford to have a good game, too. Yep. Uh, fun fact, this is Pat Mahomes' first game indoors, if you didn't know. Right, that. yeah. You know? And he dominates indoors. Did you know that? Uh, he's a star. His last indoor game in college, he threw for, I think, six touchdowns. It doesn't surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> Look what he does outdoors. Um, I would have taken the Kansas City minus 100 if they offered that line. <laughs> So I like that cover very easily. So Chiefs minus seven. I think that's an easy lock. Yeah, so love it. Comfortable there. Love that. This one we could potentially have a little bit of a disagreement on. Um, the Browns are heading into Baltimore. Uh, the Browns are plus six and a half. Um, they're like you. You posted on Break Room Daily. They're kind of a incomplete package right now, not living up to the hype. Uh, the Ravens are on fire. Uh, what do you think about that six and a half line? I don't know. I think that might be too much. I I like the Ravens, and I love Lamar Jackson. He's been great so far, but I don't think um, 
I don't think that he's really had a, a huge test. Besides, you know, Kansas City was a test for him, and, you know, they lost. Right. And people thought that might be a real, you know, a real close game, and he played okay, but it wasn't like he, he was playing, the, you know, the previous weeks. He hasn't stood up to the, the hype in the big game just yet. Um, I agree. I like the Browns plus six and a half. Um, I think regardless, they're still a good team. I think that was everyone's favorite for that division coming in. I think we're going to see a low-scoring game. We're there. sleeping on three weeks of action. Yeah. Suddenly, we're. I don't like Baker. Field. I don't like Baker at all. I think he came into the season way too overrated. Yeah. People had him he's as a like a top five quarterback. Johnny Manziel. Right. People had him as a top five quarterback. Um, you know, they thought, oh, throw an Odell Beckham. He's going to be amazing. He's got Jarvis Landry. He's going to be amazing. But. Honestly, the best, the, the player I like the most on that offense is Nick Chubb. Oh yeah, Chubby's nice. Did you see that funny meme with like the kids with the jerseys? Zero Chubb, oh, yeah. quarter Chubb. Yeah. <laughs> like no nice. Chubb, yeah. half Chubb, full yeah. Chubb. Chubb. Yeah, yeah, that was that's great. <laughs> um, so yeah, I like in that game Browns plus six and a half, but I also like the Ravens money line. So if you're one of those weirdos that throw two into a parlay, I feel comfortable with both of those. Yeah. Um, an interesting one. It could be a little bit of a de- defensive bout. It could be a trash game. It could be a great game. Um, the Vikings are heading into Chicago. Um, you got Vikings plus one and a half versus the Bears. Um, obviously, the Bears have looked dismal at best. Um, their record's not really they had a, who they are. They had a good game last game, and Trubisky actually showed up and played well. But no. But I think that Trubisky is not a good quarterback. Mm-mm. And they could have had Watson with their pick, and they took Trubisky. Yeah, good pick there. Yeah, good so. Um, and I'm a UNC fan, and Trubisky's from UNC. So uh, I just I think the Vikings are going to win that game. Yes. I, got the- I love Dalvin Cook. Yep. So I think even with that defense that the Bears have, I think Dalvin Cook has a good game. I think they get the ball to Thielen, mm-hmm. and he has a touchdown. Um, Diggs, from what I've read, wants out of Minnesota. Okay. So I don't think he's going to be too involved. So if you have Stephon Diggs this week, I'd sit him. But I do think uh, they cover, I think the Vikings cover that, what is it, plus 1.5? Plus 1.5, I like that money line. Um, And you covered a lot of my notes. Obviously, Dalvin's a beast. Dalvin doing Dalvin. Been so good, as long as he doesn't get hurt. Yep, I mean, I had him, I picked him up when he was hurt. I had him and Murray kind of as a combo back. So Mm -hmm. Dalvin Cook came back, he won me in my fantasy league last year. So thank you, Dalvin. Thielen's a beast, he was on my team also. Um, I just think ultimately, you know, Kirk's a better quarterback than Mitchell at this point. Oh. Especially, he has more weapons, too. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of weapons. And honestly, the Vikings really haven't used Kirk that much this year because Dalvin's been so good. So they just give the ball to Dalvin and let him go. Feed the horse. I agree, but I think this could be a breakout game for Thielen, like you were saying. Yeah, he should have a a pretty good game, and I think... uh, I think they cover for sure. And I think Chicago's the type of team that can pack the box on them, so then you're going to see them in the air a little bit more, which could be could help. Um, the night game, the last game of the week, um, at least until Monday Night Football, which is another trash game, three weeks in a row. Um, you got the Cowboys, minus two and a half versus the Saints. Um, obviously, Breeze is out. Um, what are your thoughts with Teddy Bridgewater at home? What, how are you feeling? Uh, I like Dallas to win that. Dak Prescott's been incredible so far this year. Um, even though they don't have Gallup right now because he's hurt, I think Zeke, the combination of Zeke back there and then bringing in Tony Pollard mm-hmm. occasionally and then uh, Dak being able to find his receivers, including Jason Witten. I know um, coming out was nice for them. Yeah, so I think Dallas covers that minus 2.5. I think they go into New Orleans and win that game. And I don't think I just don't think Bridgewater has... You know, although they looked really good last week against yes. Seattle and beat Seattle, which, which was shocking. Right. Seattle was my Super Bowl pick until last week. Yeah, so but I do think Dallas covers. I think Dallas is one of the better teams this year, which it's been a while since Dallas has been a really good team, but I think they're good this year. My exact quote was, they are legitimate until proven otherwise. So um, I think that's fair, and I'm going to bet against the Saints until Breeze comes back, so... Unless, obviously, they play the Me too. Dolphins. I love Alvin Kamara, though. Alvin Kamara is nice. That's what, like, it's scary because it's hard to bet against the Saints when you have Kamara. You have Michael, yeah, Michael Thomas. Th- like, Michael Thomas, the poor, poor Michael Thomas owners, you know. 
anyone who's got him on their fantasy team is expect you know is expecting big games and right. Two first round guys. Yeah. Wrap here. We're going to look at our lock for a parlay this week. We agreed on three games, so I think it's safe to say Cowboys minus two we feel good about. Um, the Vikings money line, do you think that's a lock? I do. I think that, I think Vikings are going to go into Chicago and win that game. And then Chiefs minus seven. I don't think anyone's denying that. So. No, I think uh, it's going to be a high-scoring game there. It's just going to be... The Lions trying to play catch up with the Chiefs, just like every other team in the NFL. Agreed, agreed. Um, all right, well, we'll wrap with, we're going to score this beer. Um, the beer we did last week, uh, Alternative Din Dimensions made alt beer ale. Um, I scored it a 7.9. Uh, very similar. It was the same IBU as last week, 28. So I had a similar bitterness, but the little pumpkin spice added. I liked it. Yep. Um, so I guess what would you score this? For a beer and then a fall beer, so two yeah. summer scores. So for a you know a regular beer that you're gonna drink, I think I'd score this about a 7.6. And if you're talking fall beers, I'd boost it up a little bit because I'm not a huge fall beer guy, but uh, this was a good beer and I'd give it a 7.9. Okay, cool. Um, I'm actually gonna sound like I'm being redundant, but I'm gonna score it the same as I did the Alternative Dimension beer. I put it in a very similar class. Um, I 7.9, I think is a very fair score for this beer, beer overall. Um, fall score, I'm a huge fan of Pumpkinhead. Big pumpkin I, latte guy, huh? Yep. I like the jack-o'-lantern shandy, so the jacko shandy, I believe it's called. Um, yeah, I like that too. That's so there's some really good fall beers. So I'd give this about an 8-1 on the fall scale. Some of them get up into the mid to high eights. You might see some of those throughout this month. Yeah. Or if not, I'll keep finding new ones. Yeah, I'm excited to try some more fall beers. Me too, dude. So yeah, 7-9, uh, 8-1 on the fall scale. That's a review. Um, stick around, coming up right after this brief break, uh, we're going to do the diaper changing challenge. Um, last question though, I want to chat Break Room Daily just to end this episode. Um, if you're a fan, we're looking at this calendar year, the next few months, what do we have coming up to look forward to? Why, why should we subscribe? Yeah, so we plan on, we're in the pre-launch stage right now, so we're really just getting feedback from our users from people who are subbed and signed up to get the newsletters. The newsletters are going to have anything from beer reviews, music reviews, to travel tips and topics, to business tips and topics and articles, cool. odd topics, and also uh, your fantasy football daily stuff that you'll get, yeah. and including stardom, sit -em, waiver wire pickup, stuff like that. Um, and we're also now selling some merchandise. And just DM me if you want some of this stuff. DM Break Room Daily. $40 for the sweatshirts and the t-shirts are $20. Cool color palettes here too. Yeah, and we'll continue like to pump blue. that stuff out. We're going to continue to put out some content for everybody to enjoy. Uh, so definitely sign up for the newsletter and join the Facebook page, the Instagram, and the Twitter, all at Break Room Daily. Okay, well you heard it there. So without further ado, uh, let's bring in the little ladies. the diaper challenge we're doing a speed contest so this will be timed we're calling you out cody healy you're next up let's get this chain going break room daily style count us down here we go someone count us down hands on your head okay ready three two one go let's go <laughs> Wait, thank you girl thank you plan <laughs> Let's get this. Up, oh, see. Bum up, bum up, bum up. Yeah. Like we planned. Ooh, Teddy, you're getting white. Totally white. Here you go. Underbell, underbell. <laughs> this is where the kicker comes into play. Uh, and you gotta chug your beer at the end for the record. No, no, no. Wow, Teddy, you just got. Your ass handed no. to you. No! Time! 36, 85. Teddy, you're at 40. 41, 42. You're spilling on Zoe. You're spilling on the frat house. 47. Let's go, Charlotte. Woo. That's why we keep you around, sweetie. Oh. You did it, baby. You had good tight legs. Like and you used a wipe? Oh, yeah, you yeah. did. Wow. 